In this video, I want to give you a quick overview over the most important tools that we have in After Effects. You can find all the tools available right here in the Tools bar. If you hover with your mouse over one of these tools, you see that After Effects shows you the name of the tool and in parentheses the keyboard shortcut. The first tool that we want to work with is the selection tool and this is kind of the standard tool in After Effects. With the selection tool, you can either select your items by simply clicking on them. You see that After Effects always displays this frame here when a layer that you can select is recognized and when you click with the left mouse button you select this layer. If we select the background layer here and then try to select one of these symbols here, the shapes here, you see that this is not possible right now. And this is because the background layer is overlapping with these and After Effects will not realize that we want to select another layer because it thinks we still want to work with our background layer. If you want to select one of the elements in the foreground now, you simply select them in your timeline panel. Right here we have all the layers and you can access them and select them here as well. Another important function for the selection tool is you can change the position of your item. So let's say I want to drag this rectangle over here. I simply left click and drag and then I let the mouse button go and I moved this rectangle to a new position. can do the same here with my stick figure and of course also with my circle. So you can move around and reposition items with the selection tool. I will press Ctrl C three times to undo this movement. Let's select the rectangle here and another option is to scale my objects. Therefore I can click on this little squares that you see right here. If I click and drag on this one here up in the middle, then I can scale my object on the y-axis. If I click here, I can scale my object on the x-axis. And if I click one of these handles right on the corner, then I can scale both. If you hold down shift, then you can constrain the proportion of your object and can scale it up and down. Let's undo this by pressing Ctrl C until I have my square back. Perfect. So these are the most important functions of the selection tool. So now let's move on to the next tool in our toolbar and this is the hand tool. I can press H to select this. You already saw the hand tool. The hand tool is accessible in different ways and it is used if you click and drag to move around your work area in the composition window or also if we are zoomed in here as I showed you already in the navigation video. If we zoom in here you can also scroll or move through your timeline. The easiest way to access the hand tool is not the H tool actually. I prefer if I am in another tool, for example the selection tool, I prefer the method of simply pressing and holding down the spacebar. If I hold down the spacebar the hand tool will be active and if I let it go then I will go back to my tool. I can do this with another tool, for example let's select the rotation tool, I'm working with the rotation tool let's say, then I press spacebar and I quickly can access the hand tool. If I let the spacebar go then my rotation tool will be active again. The next tool on our bar is the zoom tool. The zoom tool, the keyboard shortcut is the C, is very similar to the option to scroll with your mouse button. So to zoom in you can either click here with your left mouse button. If you want to zoom out you can hold down the Alt key and click with the left mouse button. You can do the same by moving your mouse wheel. If you scroll up then you zoom in, if you scroll down you zoom out. The only difference uh, of the zoom tool is you can specify where you want to zoom in. So let's say I want to zoom in on the head of my stick figure here. You see I click on this head and it will move this point where I click into the middle of my composition window here. So I can zoom in here and now let's say hold down all the zoom out. I want to zoom in on this corner so I click here and you see that now After Effects will position this corner right in the middle of my composition window. So let's hold down Alt, zoom out again. Okay. The next tool in the bar is the rotation tool 
and the keyboard shortcut for the rotation tool is W. So let's choose the rotation tool by pressing W on our keyboard. I really recommend that you start using the keyboard shortcuts because this will speed up your workflow if you learn them from the beginning. If you have your rotation tool active, you can select one of these figures, for example, our stick figure, and then you can click and drag and you see that you can rotate it. But be a bit careful because if you click outside of our layer like so, then you will select the background or another layer and you will rotate this. So let's undo this. You can always come here and lock a layer, for example, here our background layer by simply clicking this lock switch here. Then the background layer will not be available to select anymore. Now you can come in here and rotate all these layers without being afraid to change the background. Let's undo this. Let's unlock our background layer and let's move on to the next tool. The next tool is the camera tool. To take a look at the camera tool, we will move to our tools to composition now. So click on the tools to composition here. If it's not open in the timeline panel, then double click here to open it up. If you select your camera tool, the shortcut is C and you will see that there is this really small, really small triangle on the right bottom of this icon. And if I click and hold my mouse button now, then you see that there are a few different options. So let's make sure that the camera unified tool, unified camera tool is called, is selected. And let's click with the mouse button, hold it down, and then you can drag. This is the so-called camera orbit tool. And you can see that you can orbit around your camera in your scene. Let's undo this. If I press and hold my middle mouse button, then I access the camera track tool. With the camera track tool, I can now move my camera on the X axis or also on the Y axis and position it in my scene. Let's undo this. And the third option in the unified camera tool is the right mouse button. If you click and hold and move your mouse from left to right, then you can move your camera on the C axis. So you can zoom into your scene or you can zoom out, but it's not really zooming. It is really positioning your camera in 3D space. So you change the position and not the zoom. Okay, let's undo this by clicking Ctrl and C. If you want, you can also access these tools separately by pressing C on your keyboard. Now you see the uh, orbit tool is active. If I press C once again, then I'm now in the track tool, the camera tracking tool. And if I press C once again, then I'm in the tracking tool for the C axis position. And now I can change the positions, of course, by left clicking. I do not have to use the middle mouse button or the right mouse button when I'm in this separate mode. If you want to reset the position of your camera, a little hint, you can enter the settings right here and by transform, you see here is this reset button and you can click it and then you will come back to the original position of your camera. Good, this was the camera tool. Now let's come back to our tools one composition and let's select the next tool. And this is called the pan behind tool or the anchor point tool. We can access this by clicking the Y key on our keyboard. With our anchor point tool, we can change the anchor point of a layer. You see the anchor point is this little like a crosshair here. And if I click this and drag, then nothing is really happening. Only this little point is changing. But the anchor point is really quite important. So for example, if I put the anchor point right down here to this position, by the way, you can hold down control and then you can constrain the movement of the anchor point on your layer. You see that After Effects gives you these lines here and you can also snap it to these points here. So let's snap it by holding down control, moving it down. And when this small square occurs, then we let the mouse button go. And now we know that our anchor point is really set to the bottom border of our layer here. Now, if I use my selection tool, for example, by pressing V on my keyboard, and if I want to scale this figure now, you see, if I grab this handle on top and drag down, you see that now my figure is scaling from the anchor point. 
To show you the difference, I will undo this scaling and I will undo the position change of the anchor point and I will to quickly scale it like this and now you see that it's scaling from the middle here. So go back here again, choose our anchor point tool by clicking Y, hold down Ctrl and snap it. So the same applies for the rotation. If I now select my rotation tool by pressing W on the keyboard and I rotate my figure, you see that now it rotates right here on our anchor point. So the anchor point of a layer is quite important. Let's undo this. Let's go back and select our anchor point tool by pressing Y on the keyboard. We can also change the anchor point tool. Now I move to the hand tool quickly, you see, to just shift my work area uh, up a little bit. What I also can do with my anchor point tool, if I hold down Alt and select my anchor point and move it, you see that I can move my layer around, but my anchor point will stay in the same spot in my composition. So this can be handy in some cases, and it's also the same. You can also use the control to constrain this movement or to snap the anchor point to certain points like here or maybe in the middle. So let's snap this back in the middle. Okay, so now let's press Ctrl C to get this back where it is. And let's snap our anchor point to the middle position of our layer. So this is the pen behind tool. The next tool is called the rectangle tool. If we take a look, we have this small uh, triangle here again. So there is more to access. And if I click and hold, you see we have a rectangle tool. We have a rounded rectangle tool, ellipse tool, polygon tool, and star tool. And we can access these tools by clicking Q on our keyboard. Let's click Q on our keyboard. And you see now my cursor is really small and hard to see. It is only such a little cross. What I can do with these tools is I can create either shapes or masks. If you have no layer selected, so let's click here to make sure that nothing is selected. I will zoom out a little bit here. And if I select my, let's say, um, let's press Q. And you see that here it will change now. The ellipse tool, this is the polygon tool, star tool. I want to use the rectangle tool for now. And if I click and drag now, you see that I can create a new shape layer with a rectangle on it. You see that After Effects created a new layer and yeah, I created a rectangle. If I want to create a square, then I can click drag and hold down shift. And you see now I can create a square. And if a layer is selected, in this case, my shape layer is selected, I can add shapes to this layer. So let's add another rectangle here. And you see that After Effects will add these shapes to the shape layer. If you want to create another shape, then we can, of course, choose another option, maybe the Ellipse tool. So I press Q two times to make this Ellipse tool uh, active. Now let's say I do not want to add this Ellipse to this shape layer. I want to create a new layer. So I click out of this so that nothing is selected. So to create this Ellipse, I can click here, click and drag, and then you see I can create an ellipse. If you hold down the shift key, you can constrain this to a circle. And if you additionally hold the control key, then you can scale it from the point where you initially clicked. Now I leave the mouse button and now my shape is created. So this is one option that you have with this tool. You can create simple shapes and shape layers. So let's delete these shape layers because I do not need them now. Let's delete them by simply selecting them here and pressing delete on our keyboard. The second option that we have with our rectangle tools or with our shape layer tools is that we create a mask on a layer. To create a mask on a layer, a layer has to be selected. So for example, this circle layer, you see that this circle layer is not a shape layer. It is a simple solid with a mask applied to it. If I open this up here, you can see that now we have to tab masks here and we can enter this. And you see that here, a circular mask is applied. If I change this here from the transfer mode from add to none, then you see that this is a simple solid, a white solid with this little mask applied. 
So what I could do now here is let's change this back to add again and let's simply create another mask here. So I will create a rectangular mask, make sure my circle layer is selected and now I can click and drag and create a mask. The same applies here. You can shift, hold down shift to constrain it to a square. And if you hold down control, then you can scale the square from the initial point where you clicked. We will talk about the difference between shapes and masks a little bit later. For now, just uh, let's create another mask just as an example, the star tool. If I click and drag now a star, you see I can also rotate this. If I hold down shift, I can constrain it so it will not rotate anymore. If I hold down control, I can change the look so I can move these points. You can see I can change the look of the star. So let's say we put this in here and now I've created another mask to my layer. So let's delete these two masks here do not need them anymore. And let's make one more example for a mask. For example, I want to apply a mask to my stick figure. Maybe I want to get rid of his head, whatever, but let's do this. So let's come in here. Let's select the rectangular tool. Let's click and drag. Now I created a mask on my stick figure layer and you see that now we have this cutout here and if I want to get rid of his head I would go to my selection tool. I would double click on my mask to move it around. So this is another function of the selection tool. You can move around masks and shapes and everything. I could also now scale this mask and you see that with my selection tool when I move my mouse cursor over these corners then you see that these arrows here change to these small uh, rotation icons and if I click and drag now I can also rotate my mask. So this is also a function of the selection tool. So I wanted to get rid of the head now so I can come in here on my stick figure layer, make sure that my masks are visible. I select the mask blend mode and change it to subtract and now I cut off the head of my stick figure. Awesome! So let's get this head back of this poor little guy and let's delete the mask and let's move on to our next tool.